Hello everybody, this is CJ Wiley with more Adventures Off the Road. This is my third attempt to make this video, so uh, forgive me. <laughs> I have to I have to do some acting here. Um, it's about a friend of mine. Craig Bickford. who I met uh, when I was 15. I used to go to Columbia, Missouri. He was 16 and I was 15. And, uh, man, I met so many nice people there. Donnie and Tom and Keith. BJ the mailman. And uh, Craig Bickford. You know, he was, uh, he wasn't on my level of pool, but he was, a, he was a sharp hustler, you know, and, and at that age, uh, he played cards really well and dice and, uh, super smart mathematically. And, you know, we just clicked immediately and, uh, we were on the other side of, uh, you know, we gambled a little bit playing pool <laughs> and, uh, it didn't, uh, turn out so well for him so we decided to join forces so we started going on the road and our training ground like I said was Columbia Missouri at um, the Columbia Billiard Center on 9th Street downtown I'm going up a hill <laughs> this is my refuge so uh, and someone else that just sent me a uh, message Kelly Reynolds that uh, used to be my girlfriend back when I was a teenager and we all she went on the road too with us and you know she stayed there with Craig and did uh, what she could but you know I want to celebrate life not uh, mourn death although it's hard, you know. But uh, one of the first trips Craig and I took was through, uh, you know, we were in Missouri. We'd go over to St. Louis, and we went down into uh, Tennessee and Kentucky, and and we did some uh, some hustles. We looked so young. We had a incredible advantage so uh, I'll give you a for instance we were in this one pool room and we beat these guys out of a couple hundred and then we left and went some other places and came back and they were like uh, oh, we're not gonna play you two you're actually really good players and and uh, you're you know you're trying to lock us up and you won't really gamble we had this prearranged where uh, Craig said, you think we won't gamble? You think we care so much about money? He took a $100 bill out, held it up, and lit it on fire. <laughs> and the whole room, <laughs> there was a lot of people there. And uh, I'd never seen such a mass hypnosis come over a crowd. <laughs> and it worked. So after they saw us burn the $100 bill, they were pretty sure. As a matter of fact, they knew that we didn't care about money if we were willing to burn it. So uh, so they played both of us. And we won about $1,800 minus the $100 uh, lemon <laughs> or fire, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. So that's the type of stuff that we... Uh, that we did, you know, I, I can't go into all the details, maybe I will at some point. As a matter of fact, I know I will, but right now I just needed to get this out because, uh, you know, I can't go back for his funeral, so I, uh, I just want to share some parts of his life, you know, that I shared and uh, Kelly shared and Donnie shared and Tom shared, Keith, 
Phil that owned the pool room. I mean, we were all really tight, man. And You know, the best education I think somebody can get is to spend a year or two in a pool room around people like us, you know, or people like them. I mean, I, I had so many mentors that I'm thankful for. And uh, it just made me... I wouldn't trade what I know for all the college degrees in the world and all the money in the world. All the pleasures and treasures, I say. But, uh, you know, Craig and I had, we just had a lot of fun because we always made a lot of money and we were so young. And when we were, uh, I think we were both like 18. He's a year ahead. He's like nine months older than me. So uh, we went to Evansville, Indiana. We played at a place called Arc Lanes. and uh, But the favorite place was the Busy Body, <laughs> which was a topless club. And I spent a lot of time there <laughs> because they had a pool table. And it was close to the horse track, and there was jockeys. Uh, I told a story one time beating a jockey, flipping coins out of uh, all his money, his leather coat, and his car. Uh, I won't go back over that, but Craig and I would, would go in there, and, you know, like I said, we were like advanced hustlers for our uh, for our age, and, you know, those girls in those clubs are also hustlers, so we just clicked with them, and we had like five of them that we were messing around with, and we made a deal with them that if they steered, steered you know, their customers over uh, to play us pool, we'd give them 20% of what we won. And there's a lot of a lot of nights we'd win like 500 and give them 100, or we'd win 800 and give them 160. And I mean, they just loved that. And uh, like I said, you know, like attracts like. So uh, you know, hustlers of a feather flock together. And uh, and we had this this uh, little arrangement between Craig and I that, you know, we had, we had, uh, we shared a hotel room, but, uh, sometimes we'd get separated and he'd go off with a girl or I'd go off and, and we always had a deal that whoever got to the room first, if we were like busy, we'd put a Mountain Dew can outside the door. <laughs> and, uh, that was the signal. So we'd wait, you know, <laughs> 20 minutes or 30 minutes or you know just maybe keep checking and when the Mountain Dew can disappeared it was okay go to the door and and go in or you know we'd knock or whatever anyway that was our thing and uh, last time I uh, saw Craig well I stayed with him uh, for a couple days and I was out playing pool and messing around in Columbia Missouri and and he was at his house you know he was just you know, the doctors were telling him he had about six months to live, you know, and I just couldn't imagine that. You know, he didn't look like that, but, you know, whenever you're going to make a line, you always want to go conservative, <laughs> I guess, is when they say things like that, because how could they possibly know? But Because this is like four years later. And, uh, but one night I got done, so I go back to his house, I go up to the steps, and there's a Mountain Dew can sitting by his front door. <laughs> I thought he had a girl, you know? So I pick up the, the Mountain Dew can, and under it's a little note with a smiley face that said, Just kidding. Come on in. <laughs> I'm going to miss Craig. <clears throat> Anyway, I just wanted to tell uh, all his friends, you know, because I know several of you will watch this, that uh, I appreciate it. everything, because life is short. You never know, but Craig touched my life. And I'm grateful. I hope he uh, is in a special place right now.
really do. Anyway, one thing I know for sure, he knew what I meant when I told him the game is a teacher, life is a teacher, you know. Your friends are teachers, your parents are teachers. When I walk out here, I'm always a student. Anyway, till we meet again, Craig Bickford, you're gone, but you're not forgotten. That's right. Anyway. You know, it just hit me, you know, it's, uh, even the, uh, <laughs> No matter how much you try, you know, it's uh, like it's good to, to have emotion, you know. I spent a lot of my life uh, concealing it to the point where I told somebody uh, I spent half my life becoming one of the most intimidating pool players in the world and the other half of my life trying to undo it. I think I've undone it. Anyway, appreciate you listening to this, and uh, if you knew Craig, and do a toast for me, and uh, we'll meet again. I know it. <laughs>